All right, we're live. Okay, I have a confession to make. LinkedIn has traditionally been my least favorite social media platform until like two or three months ago. And now I find myself falling in love with LinkedIn. It's hard to even believe I'm saying that, but let me just tell you there, it's not just me. It's a lot of people who are uh, really seeing a reemergence of the opportunity that LinkedIn has always had. It's like, it's nothing new. It's not like it's a new platform or that it's got some shiny bells and whistles that, you know, it hasn't had before. Um, it definitely has evolved just like all the social platforms have, but it's, it's like a lot of us are just now beginning to say, whoa, we really need to be on LinkedIn, um, more than just having a profile. So if you are that person, then I want to welcome you to today's, um, uh, marketing that grows your business episode three. We're already up to three. Um, this show is, um, currently being sponsored by promo.com and we have a wonderful, wonderful, amazing uh, guest today who is all about LinkedIn and always has been. She has seen the vision that LinkedIn uh, had for us as entrepreneurs for years and uh, is a true LinkedIn expert. So I'm super excited that Melanie Dodaro is with us today. And let me share just a little bit about Melanie um, in just a second. But before I do that, I want to set the stage for our giveaways. Every um, show we do do some giveaways and the way we do them is if you have an aha moment during the course of the show, um, just type in hashtag aha and whatever your aha moment is and let us know what that is so that we can in the comments so that we know that you have, you know, well, what is it first so that we can learn from what you guys learn because that gives us value and, and helps us to better serve you, one. Um, but we also use those hashtags uh, to pick winners for some pretty clever little uh, gifts that we want to uh, bestow upon those that participate in, and are learning as we go. So one of those things is um, a ring light. Um, that is you put on your phone or on your computer, uh, you know, they're super cute. They just clip on and you can take them on the fly, on the go. I'm sorry, on the go and use them on the fly. There you go. Um, <laughs> also, we got something that's super cute. I am loving this because one, it reminds me of my glasses. And two, there's this new reemergence fear, if you will, around people spying on us through our webcams. Have you all heard about this? So if you haven't uh, heard about it, evidently it's a thing. And we got these little covers that we're also going to be gifting you a winner. And we're going to give away one of these, one ring light. Um, and you can put these on your little webcam and, and you just take it off when you are going live or you are going to use your webcam. Um, and that way it protects you from spying eyes. So uh, cute little thing. I am, I love these. I'm, I'm personally, uh, well, obviously not using mine right now, but I have definitely been loving it and it, it doesn't give me that creepy feeling. So, um, and then last, but certainly not least, we're also going to give a uh, pick three winners for a month of promo. Uh, so three lucky winners are going to receive a month of promo for free. So you get a chance to check it out, see if you lo love it, which you will. Um, and, um, totally on us or totally on promo.com rather. Uh, so that's, I uh, wanted to share all of that. And one quick thing is before I do the intro, as you guys are coming in, um, I always like to know where in the world are you? So if you'll just pop in, um, you know, where you're coming in from, that would be awesome. I love knowing, not because it's fascinating to me. So we have Cecilia from France. Hey, Cecilia, super excited to have you with us. We usually have people literally from all over the world, France, right? Denmark in the house. Oh my gosh. Hello, Martin. Super excited to have you with us. So I don't know if we'll have time to get into it, but I tell you, Melanie has an amazing story that is very intriguing. I'm almost tempted, but we'll try to stay focused on LinkedIn. We have Sophia, I hope I say that correctly, from Bangladesh. Love that. Love that name. And Florida, Boca Raton. Hey, Scott. Great to see you. So it is a little overcast here in Tampa. I'm in Tampa, Florida, and it's a little bit overcast this morning. Hey, Sue. 
Chicago in the house. It's probably chilly up there. I'm betting. And Sunny, uh, yeah, we have Sunny, uh, North Carolina, Maryland. Hey, Lori, look at that cute little one she has. Super cute. All right, so I want to, um, we have, hey, Steve, I got your email, dude. I'm super excited. I can't wait. Um, that's a whole other story. I can't wait to share with you guys um, as when Steve is ready. More to come on that. All right, so. Let me get do a quick introduction real quick of Melanie Dodaro because like I said, she is incredible. You guys are going to love her. She's going to give you so much knowledge today. So make sure you have a pen and paper handy because you're going to get some golden nuggets. I promise. Um, Melanie is a predominant, a preeminent predominant too, I would say, authority on social selling on LinkedIn. So she, not only does she teach people how to leverage the power of LinkedIn, but she teaches them how to sell using the power of LinkedIn. She is the author of the number one best-selling book, LinkedIn Unlocked. Uh, she has a few others out there as well, hint, hint. But you definitely need to check out uh, her latest book, which is LinkedIn Unlocked. Um, she's also the CEO of Top Dog Social Media. Um, her company specializes in B2B uh, social selling on LinkedIn. Uh, and get this guys her superpower get this this is really amazing her superpower is creating strategies that turn cold connections into clients who doesn't want that especially if you have been on LinkedIn and you haven't been super active over there no judgment because I was that person until just a few uh, months ago and I would say I'm still just dipping my toes in. I'm trying to get more active. I'm having wonderful conversations over there on a daily basis. So um, that's why I wanted to really talk to, to Melanie and pick her brain a little bit. So welcome, Melanie. Y'all give her a big old welcome. Yeah. Hey, Kim. <laughs> so great to be here with you. And I love those red glasses. Oh, and by okay. the way, I need one of those little spying eye things, but not yes. for the purpose that it was intended. One okay. time I accidentally did a, a, a webinar, a training actually for a very conservative organization. It's like a big bank. And it was, uh, I was living in the West Coast of Canada at the time. It was specific time. It was 6 a.m. my time, 9 a.m. Eastern for them. And so I came to do this training, you know, with, in front of my computer with my house coat on, nothing else underneath it. And I accidentally had my webcam on. And from that day since, I've always had like a little post-it note over over top of my webcam so that I can never make that mistake again. And for the whole, you know, for the year afterwards, I'm like, what, did they see anything? You know, did my house code like open up a little bit? And oh my God, I literally couldn't sleep for a week. I was so horrified. So please send me one of those little red gadgets. <laughs> I will send you a little red gadget. Absolutely. All the way to Amsterdam. <laughs> What an interesting story too, right guys? Oh my gosh. Uh, but we all, you know, it happens. And sometimes you don't even realize that you could, I mean, you know, one, you don't necessarily want someone spying on you, but two, to your yeah. point, sometimes we forget to turn off our webcams. So uh, yeah. So, anyway, well, welcome. I'm super excited that you're here and that you're going to uh, let us pick your brain a little bit. So I have a question first and foremost around what in the world is going on with this whole new uh, surge as it comes to uh, people as interest in LinkedIn. Have you, are you seeing it too, or is it just me? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's interesting because one of the things I actually always liked about LinkedIn was that it was, you know, that steady and predictable platform. It always had, you know, very, very significant, but predictable growth. And it was really when all the stuff with Facebook went down with Cambridge Analytica and all that kind of stuff that people, it, it really like, it, it went from being like this to like this. And I'm sure that, you know, there's something around that. People, I, I find have lost, a lot of people have lost interest in Facebook and have headed over to LinkedIn. The, the problem is, is that they haven't understood that LinkedIn is very much a different platform, you know? And so for years, LinkedIn was kind of that boring social media platform. It was the one that was just, it was all business. And so the people that really enjoyed social media, the ones that really enjoyed spending time on Facebook and Twitter and engaging with people, they really just didn't find as much uh, enjoyment in using LinkedIn. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I've always liked it because 
I would say boring is fine as long as it's profitable. Right. <laughs> I mean, we all have things to do in our life and in our business that we don't want to do. We have to do laundry. We have to cook. We have to do various things in our business. There's always going to be boring aspects of it. But if that boring is producing results, then it's not really that boring to me because <laughs> I'm a business person first and foremost. So, you know, I think that, you know, more and more people and never, you know, people are starting to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a funny because I, I listen to the way people talk about LinkedIn. And it's almost like it's this brand new platform that people are talking about for the first time. <laughs> Where it's actually, it's older than Facebook. Yes. And, you know, I, I shared, uh, shared kind of, and I've shared this with you. It's like, um, I just would log in every like couple of months, shame on me. And there would be like lead setting there. And since I've been active and I'm on LinkedIn every day now, um, I'm generating business on LinkedIn. Um, I've had numerous, uh, I, I, in fact, I have a couple of proposals I have to put together later today because of a contact or a lead um, that started with a conversation on LinkedIn. So I'm just mm -hmm. totally looking at it through new eyes now. Yeah. You know, I think but, a lot you know, one, one of, well, yeah, and one of the things that you know you just said, you know, that, that's because you're Kim Garst, right? So opportunities are always going to come to you and find you. Problem I find with a lot of people, um, the, like one of the misconceptions with LinkedIn, it's kind of like the same thing with any business, and you we see this in the online business space, but we also see this offline. Like, you know, there's people. Well, there was a restaurant that was built in the city that I used to live in when I lived in Canada, and oh my God, I love this restaurant. It's the best food. And every time I'd go in there, I was the only person in there. And I would sit down with the owner and I'm like, you know, what are you doing to market? And she's like, oh, nothing. You know, I'm like, you really need to market your business because I really love coming here and I love your food. And I'm afraid that you're going to go under, you know? And a few months later, she did. She went under. It's kind of like that premise of you build it and they will come. Well, that doesn't work. You can't build it and they will come. You have to take some effort, right? And so I find that with LinkedIn, you know, historically, there's been three different types of users that none of which are getting any results on LinkedIn. We know the first one is always the sales picture, right? We see these people on, on LinkedIn all the time. You connect with them and off comes the sales pitch immediately. But then there's the people like that you were up until a few months ago that was kind of like the ghost, right? You set up a profile and you did nothing with it. Maybe you accepted a connection request here and there and maybe accept, sent one to people that you know here and there and that was it never had conversations with anybody and you know that you can't build a business without ever having conversations. And then the third one, these people were the people that really loved Facebook and Twitter and other platforms and even Instagram. They, they really love social media. So they love, you know, posting and sharing and engaging and, you know, but they do it all online. And in the B2B world, like if you're selling a B2B service, uh, business happens offline. It happens through conversations, whether it's over the phone or it's in person. You know, if you're selling a widget or you're selling something small or you know a consumer product, yeah, you you don't you're not talking to people on the phone. But in the B two B world, you know, it's really happening offline. The social butterflies are spending all their time online, never moving those conversations or those relationships forward, just like you did to get to that conversation where you now have a proposal going out. That's yeah. how business happens. It doesn't just happen magically, right? Yeah. So quick question to all of those who are watching. I'm just curious. Are you the the salesperson? Um, are the sales you pitcher? the sales, Yeah, the sales pitcher. Uh, it, let, that's a better way of saying it. Are you and no judgment here because again, this is about you know figuring out what works better or what you could do better going forward. Um, or are you the ghost, you know, who didn't log in very often, or are you the social butterfly? You know, I, I find that that is a core problem across the, the board where you spend so much time creating content that you're not driving business. And much of what you're, much of the content that you're creating is, um, is not goal driven. You know, it doesn't have a strategy behind it. So therefore the money is not flowing like you potentially, like it potentially could. Um, so that is definitely one of the things we're going to be talking about. Um, Paul was saying he was, he's a ghost. Yeah, that was definitely me, me on LinkedIn. I was just not super proactive there. And again, no judge, judgment here. It's like, do we want to, uh, and Marco saying LinkedIn ghost here too. Well, guys, I'm just going to say, mm -hmm. I really think that we need to wake up and smell the LinkedIn coffee because it's been a real eye opener <laughs> for me. 
it's like, oh, that smells pretty good after all. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Manny is saying she's a butterfly. Yeah, nothing wrong uh, with that. But Melanie is right. Um, the um, conversations, like just quick example, uh, turning this around from the perspective of me being totally inactive there to now having a couple of proposals. I actually had to get in my car and drive to two meetings. One was in South Florida, which wasn't convenient, but it could potentially lead to a huge contract. And then um, I had breakfast with uh, a local agency last week. And again, I had to get out of my chair, out of my comfort zone, out in front of my computer and go meet with people. Um, so, but all of that happened through conversations on LinkedIn. Yeah. So lots of ghosts yeah. here. Yeah. And, you okay, know, and so it's normal that there's, I mean, it's normal, like 99% of the people that uh, use LinkedIn fall into one of those three categories. And the reason there is a fourth category, a fourth type of user, uh, and that's the strategists. And they're the people that are using LinkedIn strategically that are, you know, uh, created a, a great compelling presence that are doing an outreach to targeted prospects that are having conversations and adding value and moving those conversations offline. And you know, one of the things that I teach, because I think that social media has created so many additional things to do in our day that we just don't have the time, right? So I'm really about what is the maximum results you can get in the least amount of time. And at the end of the day, it's really, it's about, it's a direct outreach. So finding those people that could be an ideal prospect for you, connecting with them, having conversations with them without being sales pitchy, and moving those conversations off like you know here's the thing is people are very very confused about how to use social media uh and linkedin specifically when when it comes to like promoting their products or services so they think that you're supposed to send a sales pitch message but they don't realize that what you need to think about when you're sending a message to somebody on linkedin is you need to think about if i was standing in front of this person face to face would i say this like, for example, I, I posted a blog post uh, last week about, you know, the worst examples of LinkedIn connection requests I received. So some good ones and some bad ones. And in one of them, I literally, I showed them, obviously, I, I blocked out the person for privacy, but I'm like, somebody literally sent me a message and said, hey, Melanie, this is right after connecting. Will you go to my website, <clears throat> uh, opt in, uh, review my website? get check out my newsletters and emails and give me feedback and i'm like you've got to be joking like are you <laughs> i mean i get a lot of i get a lot of sales pitches or or you know inappropriate messages but they you had a whole list i wanted you to do. You just ask me for five things and you don't even know who i am so would you go yeah. up to me and stand in front of me in person and say hey by the way melanie nice to meet you will you go do this and this and this and this and this for me right now <laughs> yes and that happens right. to me quite frequently. It's and <clears throat> not only on LinkedIn, but um, I get emails every day. Um, hey, I saw this blog you wrote, and my tool is better than the tools you mentioned. So you need to put you need to put me yeah. in your blog. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's just crazy. So we have a, a comment over on LinkedIn. I agree that talking is where it's at. So we need to get face to face. Well, even if you start with an online conversation, but you're not like demanding and you are giving value um, instead of leading with that sales pitch. I think lots of times when you're doing outreach um, to someone that you're ultimately see as a potential client or a collaborator or um, even an influencer, don't lead with what's in it for you. Lead with yes. what's in it for them. Um, you always, know, always. always. Uh, it, yeah. and, and so it's, it's just a crazy dynamic. Oh, here Chuck is saying, yeah, we just met, let's get married. That's such a yeah. great, um, you know, way of describing it. You don't just walk up to someone and say, wow, you've got great eyes and beautiful hair and I want to marry you. Although I have gotten marriage proposals on, on social. <laughs> crazy. You know, you know, it's the W I I F M filter that everybody needs to remember. All right. Just write that down. If you don't know what that means. And even if you know what it means, write it down and remind yourself of it. Everything that you send dude needs to is being evaluated from that person's W I I F M filter. What is in it for me? And so, you know, even pr proposing a phone call, well, if you're going to propose a phone call to somebody, you got to propose it from their perspective, not yours. 
you know, everything you do needs to come to, from their perspective because, you know, the sad, I mean, this, this is just the way it is. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about Kim. They only care about how we can help them. Amen. So yeah. if we, you know, focus from it, that perspective, it's, we're going to create interest, but you're not going to create interest when you're talking about yourself constantly. And I, I think uh, I've said this for years. I really feel like if we wake up every day and we lead with a servant based heart, in other words, what can we do for someone else? Then the rest of that will uh, will flow. But if you wake up every day and you see a dollar sign on everybody that you encounter's forehead, then the dynamic is totally different. And the dynamic, therefore, when it comes to sales, is going to be totally different too. So it's always about them. It's never about us. And if we can have that attitude going into any relationship, then by, by virtue of that, um, I think we come out a winner on that. By the way, guys, um, Melanie mentioned a, a blog that she just wrote. Her website, again, is topdogs, topdogsocial.com. So no, top definitely. Social media. Oh, thank you. I forgot the media. Topdogsocial.com. <laughs> And we'll, we'll, we'll definitely share that later, but I didn't want you to lose that because I feel like those great conversations, those the great outreach messages that she's got as, as well as the ones that are not awesome are going to be great examples uh, for you. So definitely go check out her latest blog. Um, Jenny is saying, aha, lead with a servant based heart. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about misconceptions when it comes to LinkedIn. When, what I mean, do you have like a, a list of things that I mean, I could probably like some of my misconceptions, but I would love to hear what, you know, kind of broad based across the board. What are some of the bigger misconceptions that most people have when it comes to LinkedIn? You know, um, well, I mean, I think, you know, I think one of the ones I mentioned earlier is build it and they will come, you know, having a profile and thinking that magic business is going to magically appear is, is a big problem. So then people are like, oh, LinkedIn doesn't work for me because I'm not getting business from it, but they're not doing anything. Um, so that's, the, you know, one of the main things. The other thing is, you know, it's a social media platform. So let's, you know, share things that are social. It's a professional platform. So you do need to engage with it and share things very differently than you would on uh, Facebook or other platforms, you know, staying away from the topics that are uh, polarizing, um, keeping personal stuff to an absolute minimum. If you did want to share something personal, figuring out how to spin it in a business perspective, you know, for example, you know, I might share a picture. I was on, in Barbados on vacation last month and once in a while, I'll, I'll take a picture of like the beach where I am and I'm going to be like, this is my office for the week. And, you know, say something about that. So I turn that personal into, you know, a professional post versus the way that I would post it on Facebook or Instagram. So, you know, really just understanding, you know, who you're speaking to and what works for that platform is really important. I think, you know, just understanding what works for all platforms is really important. You know this. We treat each platform differently. Like on LinkedIn, you'll see people completely and totally overusing hashtags They almost they're using it like they think it's Twitter or Twitter and uh, Instagram rather. And, you know, every word is hashtagged. There's, it serves no purpose. <laughs> hashtags on LinkedIn are searchable uh, words. They're, they're things that people are searching for. So if you're hashtagging something that nobody's searching for, then you just, it looks spammy and it serves no purpose. And I think that, you know, really doing everything from a, a place of purpose and having a goal and objective is really important. You know, like, your profile, the goal and objective of your profile is make sure that you have a profile that represents you well and is building a you know a strong and powerful and pers personal brand. When you send a connection request to somebody, you have a single goal, and that goal is to get them to accept it. When you share something on LinkedIn, share it with a purpose and a goal as well. That goal might be you want to drive traffic to a new article that you just created. It might be that you want to start a conversation around this topic and, and get people to engage in it. It might mean whatever it is, but you know, if you have a specific goal for doing what you're doing uh, and you really stay within that, you know, stay focused on that, you're going to have a lot more success. Yeah, and I, I would say that's true. Uh, honestly, on all socials, uh, it's, it should always be goal driven. Everything you post on social should have a goal. Now, sure, it's totally okay if you're trying to drive engagement or uh, if uh, but but again, what is the goal before you put it out there? Uh, decide, you know, are, are you wanting to get 
uh, people to, you know, respond or, um, you know, what, whatever it is. It, are you trying to drive a sale? Uh, are you trying to drive traffic? Um, I mean, it could be a variety of things. But I love what you said about the hashtags because, and, and more specifically in the bigger picture of how each platform um, needs to be um, treated independent or native. What, what the content that we share there should be native to that that um, and integrate well within that platform. Um, and then hashtags are also a part of that, in my opinion. Like on ha on Instagram, you can get away with tons of hashtags, right? Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't want to use tons of hashtags on Facebook or uh, LinkedIn, I would argue. So quick, I, I just wonder, uh, do you have like a magic like number that you would recommend when it yeah. comes to LinkedIn? Okay. Yeah, so I would say no more than two or three. Good. Right. And you know what? Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense to include a hashtag. So quality over quantity of anything, appropriateness over everything. You know. So um, many of my posts will have one hashtag in it because I'd have to figure out a way to put it in that is is not authentic or isn't real or isn't organic. You know, and yeah. it defeats the purpose. So you know, people are so obsessed with engagement and numbers and visibility but at the end of the day you know what kind of engagement are you getting like what kind of visibility is that getting if all of a sudden you have a post that's getting a ton of visibility but it makes you look bad is it worth it or you got a post that's got a bunch of engagement but the wrong kind of engagement is it worth it Good point. Really good point. So that kind of leads us to my next question, because I think that um, in some of these, I think you've already touched on, but I'd be just curious, like, what is like common mistakes that, that a lot are making on LinkedIn? Um, I know, like, you know, being the super salesy, like I just met you and uh, hey, I'm going to pitch you on my, you know, my stuff. That's probably er, don't do that. But what are some mm -hmm. other common mistakes that you see people making on LinkedIn? There's so many, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but you know, I'll start with one of the most basic ones, and this is the one that you know everybody, most people neglect. Make sure that you look you look great. Your LinkedIn profile is probably one of the biggest parts of your personal brand. And I say that because if somebody wants to Google you and they want to know who you are personally, I mean, I'm sorry, professionally, um, they're going to type in your name into Google. And it's usually the LinkedIn profile that they'll click on first. And so, you know, you need to make sure that you look great. But then, you know, once you're there, everybody's like, okay, well, how do I, how do I get more visibility and, and all that kind of stuff? And, you know, so most people are posting much too frequently. Well, then there's some that don't post at all. And so that's, you know, it's really about finding that, that balance. I used to say, you know, I used to say post on a daily basis to keep yourself top of feed, top of mind. I actually don't say that anymore. I say post when you're inspired. If that's once a week, that's fine. Twice a week, that's fine. Because I'd rather see quality posts than quantity posts. The problem is, is people are posting so for, and here's the other thing that's really interesting about LinkedIn. LinkedIn posts have longevity. You know, Facebook posts has got, you know, a certain amount of hours that, you know, it'll, sh it'll show a Twitter, a tweet's got a certain amount of minutes. A LinkedIn post can gain traction for a full week. So if you're inundating your you know, posts on, on LinkedIn too often, those, you're pushing aside those other posts that aren't actually getting the visibility. The other thing too that people are doing uh, is, is that they're tagging ex people excessively, right? You know, just randomly tagging. Well, LinkedIn's actually started penalizing, and I can't say this for sure, but uh, there's been some evidence that states this, that if you're tagging a bunch of people in your post and those people that you're tagging are not engaging with it, it's being de-emphasized. So that attention seeking tagging is actually getting penalized. Ooh. So there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a biggie. That's a, like a super golden nugget. Did anybody else? I, I don't normally do that unless I have mentioned, like I have a blog post and there are numerous people mentioned in that blog post, I might tag them. That's, but that's appropriate tagging. Appropriate right. tagging is fine. Like, you know what, you're tagging me. Uh, I'm doing an interview with Melanie. Uh, I'm tagging you. I just did an interview with Kim. That's appropriate tagging. It's the irrelevant tagging. So I now no longer engage with anybody who tags me in a post that that isn't about me. 
Like when I say isn't about me, I mean, if they've shared my content, I always go, I click like, and I comment, say thanks so much for sharing you know, that article, really appreciate it. Um, but if they've just randomly put me in there to try to gain some more traction from the news feed, in their news feed, I don't engage anymore. Yeah. So I am, um, this happens to me quite frequently on, um, Instagram, you know, people will, I like every day, somebody will tag me on something that has, has no relevance to me whatsoever. I don't even know them. I don't follow them. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, I'm tagged. Um, so it's a little bit of an irritant, uh, honestly, for me, yes. um, yes. I, it's trans, I just being transparent. Um, and, and so, uh, Yvonne is saying, I cannot stand getting tagged in a bunch of other people's business posts that have nothing to do with me. Yes. And that's exactly Melanie's point. So if you're going to tag, make sure that they're, what you are uh, sharing has relevance. Yes. To Scott's point, tagging is relevance with is profession. Tagging with relevance is professionally acceptable. Yes. Um, and yes. If, if you're just tagging to get somebody's attention for the, the, you know, like going back to the original example, uh, one of the uh, original examples that Melanie used, which was, hey, um, I want you to, you know, go to my website, um, you know, opt in, check out all my email sequences and, oh, give me all, I, oh, by the way, I want you to spend your value time and give me feedback on that. Yeah. You know, if you're doing that, then eh, stop. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um when it comes to tagging, though, uh, when you say it gives relevance, I'd like to get a little clearer picture on that. So when somebody, when you tag somebody, what kind of visibility does that give that post? Well, again, it, it, I mean, so if you tag me in a post, now people that are in my network are going to see it. But if all of a sudden I don't engage with that post, now they may not be seeing it. And a lot of your network might not be seeing it. So I don't know that for a fact, but this is evidence that, you know, I've kind of found in, in looking at it um, and looking at some of the results of, of different, doing some different tests. So, you know, in, in the, normally if you're tagging, the purpose of tagging somebody is because now their network is going to see it. Right. Um, and it's totally fine when you're tagging somebody and it's relevant to them because now people that know that person, are going to jump in and start to engage with that post too and say, oh yeah, yeah, I love that post by Kim or Gary Vee or Ryan Dice or whoever the person is, they're, you know, many, making mention to that person. And, uh, and then it becomes, it's about that person. So it's totally relevant. But when you see a post where they've tagged, you know, three, 10, 15, 20 different people that it's absolutely relevant to them, uh, it, the post just looks like spam. It's like a post that's filled with hashtags. So it looks desperate. That's what it is. It just looks desperate. And so many people are doing so many things that just make them look desperate. And at the end of the day, desperation is not attractive in business or in personal, right? So it's turning people off. If everything that you're doing is um, to, att to attract attention. People can see through that. It's so like there's a, a been a resurgence of videos on LinkedIn, right? Everybody's post sharing videos on LinkedIn, but gosh, there's the videos that you'd think that they were an excited game show host. It's like, whoa, <laughs> just the ridiculousness for attention. Uh, and it's just over the top. So what, you know, my fear is because so many people have gravitated over to LinkedIn that people are going to start to ignore the newsfeed because there's so much uh, crap. There's a, such a lack of substance being posted. And at the end of the day, you know, I've always said to I've, all, I've taught this for, for many, many years. I'm like, at the end of the day, we can't control what shows up in the news feed. We can't control who's going to see it. What we can control, is, well, well, the things that we should focus on are the things that we absolutely can control, which are you know, having a great presence, um, building our network with the right people, moving those conversations, you know, having conversations with them and moving them offline. Those are things that are, that are fully in our control. So what we share on uh, on LinkedIn is also in our control, but the visibility of it is not. So, you know, I'm kind of almost de-emphasizing that a little bit right now. Like, you know what, let's just focus on the things that we can control and the things that are absolutely guaranteed to produce results, then sit and wait for people to find it. I, I like a proactive approach to business, not a passive approach. I don't like to sit around and wait you know, approach. And this is why, why I've always been very focused on LinkedIn. 
because it's been that platform where I can teach people how to actually get results and see a positive ROI on every single you know investment that they make in it, whether it's an investment in their time or an investment in uh, you know anything at all. That there's actually a tangible ROI associated with it because you can control it. The thing that you know has always been a challenge for social media is there's so many things that are outside of our control. LinkedIn, everything that actually counts is within your control. I love that. So that said, kind of leads perfectly into my next question. Where is the most opportunity, in your opinion, for people that are wanting to get to jump into LinkedIn? Now, you've talked about having a great presence and, and all of those things, but are there other opportunities where if you want to like just get busy and I see we have a great question here. Can you untag yourself from LinkedIn posts like you can on Facebook? Yes. That's a great question. Yes. And then so yes. you can. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then going back to that opportunity factor for for those who are watching that might be ghosts like I was. And I would just be curious, even for me, I feel like I one, I know I need to clean up my profile a little bit and do some other things. But what what do you feel like is the biggest opportunities for people that are wanting to jump into LinkedIn and leverage it to actually create business? The best opportunity with LinkedIn is to leverage LinkedIn's advanced search. Um, LinkedIn's advanced search is so incredibly robust, and it is if you're using a free account. Uh, if you use Sales Navigator, which is you know one of their premium versions, it's even a hundred times more robust. But you can do so many different. You can find so many different um, you know search filters that you can narrow people or, and a target market down to really, really focus on you know who it is that you want to attract. Now you know it doesn't work for everybody, so I'll have people that will say to me, okay, Melanie, you know, will your online course that you have or your book help me? And I'm like, well, what is it that you offer? Well, I sell jewelry. And I'm like, no, it won't. <laughs> because you can't go into LinkedIn's advanced search and say, I want to find women who like jewelry. But if you know who that target market is and you can find them on LinkedIn, you know, the, the search parameters are there. So you can go in, you can filter. You can also use what's called Boolean search and, and narrow in your uh, targeting even more so. So let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, I was looking for uh, companies that had a, a vice president of marketing. I could do a search on LinkedIn, say, you know, vice president of marketing. Now, the the Boolean part is where I add some additional modifiers, or and, or not. So I could say uh, VP of marketing, or SVP of marketing, or CMO. But then I want to let, let's say I want to exclude people that were coaches and consultants because they actually are you know self-employed. They don't fit the role of what, what that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a VP of a company that you know is in charge of marketing. So I could go VP of marketing or SVP marketing or CMO, not coach, not consultant, and then get a very very uh, detailed and, and targeted search result that you can then save. And you can go back to your safe search at any time and just go through and start you know, reaching out to these people and building your network with the right people. The one other thing that I would suggest, Kim, is you know, not just looking at LinkedIn as an opportunity to find new clients, because you know, that is definitely the number one opportunity that exists with it, but also look at who you can maybe create strategic partnerships and rela relationships with. Like you know, Kim and I, you, you, know, you and I, I'm talking now, talking to the audience and to you, um, we offer complimentary services. You know, she offers services that I don't and vice versa. You know, so if her and I were reaching out to each other, we could have conversations about you know, how we could uh, refer business to each other perhaps or how she might be able to help my clients or I might be able to help her clients. You know, who do you know or who could you develop a network with that could be a great, you know, partner fit? So for example, I'll have a lot of people in the real estate industry that will reach, you know, they're interested in, in what I teach. And they're like, Melanie, can you help me with finding people that are interested in buying or selling homes? I'm like, no, I can't. Because we can't do a search on LinkedIn and say, who's interested in buying or selling at this moment? I said, but I can teach you how to build a strategic uh, you know, partnership and network with financial advisors and mortgage brokers and accountants and, and, and lawyers and uh, interior designers and home stagers and all the people that share the exact same audience as you. 
right? So you just need to look at where is the opportunity and how can you really leverage LinkedIn's advanced search to its fullest to get very, very specific on the target market that you want to focus on. I love that. And one of the ways that we have leveraged it, um, so hey, Molly, great to see you, girl. So she's saying, yes, power of partners. Um, another uh, way that I've personally used it is if I'm looking to connect with um, employees, perhaps at a brand, um, you know, and, and again, you have to do it. You can like Google a, uh, or not a Google, um, using the advanced search, you can actually pop in the domain name and it'll pull up all of the employees of that particular like you know, a promo.com and I can, yeah. you know, pull up, uh, you know, all of the employees that have profiles on LinkedIn and connect with, you know, people there if, if you wanted to. And there's value in that too, because if you might, you might not know exactly who the decision maker is, you might find mm -hmm. the decision maker um, in that, in that way. Um, there's I tremendous love that. value in doing that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you, you know, sometimes people's titles are not what you think they might be. You know, the decision makers titles right. are different. They come up with, you know, fancy titles or whatever. Uh, so Ranjan, Ranjan, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I always hate when I um, don't pronounce someone's name correctly. Collaborations are always pro profitable. Usually if you form the right relationships, they can be hugely pro uh, profitable. I totally agree. Okay. So one of the things that we haven't talked about, but I'm just really anxious. We've touched, you've touched on it a couple of times, but you, we, I'd love it if you could like dig into this a lot more. Um, when it comes to being showing up and giving value on LinkedIn, what in the world should you post? <laughs> um, you know, well, you're, the the answer to that question is who is your target market? What is the specific problems they have? Uh, what are the challenges that they have? What are the fears that they have? What are the desires that they have? And those the content that you create should speak to those people. So, you know, what should you post? It also depends on who is your target market. So, for example, if you've got a target market where you know, let's say your target market is uh, more of an analytical type of uh persona maybe it's an accountant or a lawyer they tend to read more than they watch videos uh it's a salesperson they tend to like visuals versus you know what i mean so it's really understanding who that audience is but at the end of the day it's you know what sh what should you post is you should post stuff that's going to be of value and relevant to the target market that you have and quality over quantity you know i'm a big believer that less is more now and post with purpose what is that purpose you know, that purpose occasionally can be engagement. And so like, you know, once in a while, it's good to post a, I call it an engagement post where it's just li literally asking a question, but not a silly question. Like not a question like, you know, who else has a Fitbit or who else has watched Star Wars? This is not Facebook, it's LinkedIn, you know? <laughs> it's, you know, so if you wanna ask a question, uh, about business or about something like that, you will get engagement and, and engagement is good because the more engagement, uh, if somebody's engaging with your post, they're more likely to see your future posts. But the key is, you know, add value. The other thing is, is like every platform, LinkedIn does not like links. They don't like us sending traffic off the site. So a text-based post tends to do better. You'll see lots of people, myself included, I'll include a link to my post uh, in the first comment. My purpose of sharing content to LinkedIn, you know, in addition to obviously, you know, educating my network, but the real reason is drop traffic to my website, right? So if I'm going to write a blog post, I want to drive traffic to that blog post. And so, um, you know, looking at different ways to position that so that you can drive traffic to it. And, you know, you can do it in many different ways. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, you know, too many people just share a link and, and whether it's their own content or somebody else's, they don't add any perspective to it. They don't let people know why they should actually look at it or read it or open it or click on it. You know, perspective is what gets people's attention. Um, so yeah, let people know why you're posting something. Well, I just had a big aha moment. Um, we are so guilty of the link sharing. So um, yeah, 
oh boy, I guess we'll be changing that. So I, I want to make sure you guys heard that because I caught it and it is that the way Melanie does it, she does want to drive traffic to her blog, but she'll post something that draws attention to the content and then she puts her link in the comment, the first comment, instead of just sharing a link, letting the, letting, uh, the LinkedIn um, platform propagate the image and all the stuff that we've been doing wrong. Uh, so that's an interesting and huge big aha moment for me. I just wanted to key in on that because that's so uh, value based. One of the things that I I've noticed, and I would love your perspective on this. Um, don't want to don't want to take us too far down this road, but because it is a huge problem on um, Facebook in particular, I would say Twitter. It's like terrible there as this whole political nonsense. And I'm not trying to mm -hmm. say one one side or the other, but there's so much negativity and, and ill will. And I would even go so far as maybe to say hatred uh, around, uh, you know, the opposing sides for this. Um, and I don't see that on LinkedIn, uh, which is yeah, so you refreshing. Know, you know, Kim, that was one of the other reasons why I think that LinkedIn has uh, grown so much more because people were just burnt out of the hatred and negativity, uh, especially on, on, on Facebook, uh, because a lot of people just ignore this stuff. I, I personally find Twitter to be almost useless now. It is politics, you know, uh, news, which the news part's great, but bashing and it's porn. It's like, it, it's just taken a really bad turn for the worse. Um, where LinkedIn, you don't see that kind of stuff, right? So it's, you know, it's got a much more professional tone. Um, yeah, it's, and I do want to say though, I do want to just backtrack for a moment, just because I said you're going to get less visibility uh, sharing a link doesn't mean you should never share a link. So I don't want you to think that you should never share links from now on because at the end of the day, you have a single goal and that goal is to drive traffic to that blog post, right? Or that, that piece of content. And yes, you're going to have less visibility to it if you share a link, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It just means vary it up and watch, you know, so I still share links. I just do it less frequently. Mm, great. I'm so glad you made okay. clarify that. Um, yeah. And, you know, basically I'm a fan of always testing, like, right. So test yes. it yourself. You know, some will say, you know, that video, um, you should just share like tons more video on this platform or that platform. Well, I, on my personal platform, I found that video didn't perform as well. Uh, as my text or my even my image based content. So, you know, it just depends on you. Your community is your community and what you attract through the content you put out there has certain ways that they consume content. Um, so and test, always test. So Molly is saying, I find it hard to have conversations on LinkedIn because everything is a pitch. Yes, that's why we have to show up and make sure that we do it differently for sure. I love it. But you do need to get over it, Molly, because I'm telling you, girl, we there's so much opportunity. I'm just seeing so much amazing things happen over on LinkedIn. Um, so definitely want to uh, to to get active over there. So what we're going to start and just, pulling. And, and ignore the pitches. Ignore the pitches, right? Yeah, the pitches. <laughs> you know, remove the people that pitch yeah, frankly, I'm like, you know, they'll they'll message me and say we spoke. I'm like, dude, we didn't speak. We haven't spoke. You yeah. you know, they they present it in such a way that I feel like I I should know them. I'm like, you're not pulling me here. <laughs> yeah. um, but we'll choose the winners while we take any questions you might have of Melanie. So um, if you, I know there's probably been a few questions throughout. Uh, so I'll, we'll definitely make sure that we surface those and make and uh, and get her pick her brain on this a little bit more oh great one so Sonia is saying posts versus articles on LinkedIn what's your take on that it's a great question yes yeah, so it is a great question there's no versus you can do both um, you know my belief is that I I'm a big believer that our website is our hub and so when I create content I create it for my website not for LinkedIn publisher uh, meaning the the articles and so if I'm going to share an article on LinkedIn, I'm repurposing it for my website. Um, for some strange reason, LinkedIn has used to totally emphasize uh, articles that were published on LinkedIn. They've now de-emphasized them. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it sh you shouldn't do it, though, because here's the thing. LinkedIn has got 
a hundred million times better SEO than any of our websites will ever have. Those articles that you share can show up in page one of Google, page position one of Google. Uh, so there is no or, it's do both. And you know what, do it, do it whenever you feel like it. I don't share a lot of articles on LinkedIn. I share maybe one a month. So what is your take on um, putting the, the article on your blog and then doing the same article on LinkedIn articles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can so you do that? It's not considered duplicate content and all that stuff. I'm just curious no, about your take on it. It's duplicate content if, uh, if it doesn't go on your website first. So you make sure it goes on yeah. your website first, and yeah. then afterwards it can go on to LinkedIn. Yeah, and so okay. you could do you could publish it, you know, even a couple of days after you've published it on your your website. I would typically wait a week, sometimes a month, whatever. Yeah, like there's no yeah. l limit of time, but I would wait like usually at least a few few days. Yeah, and we've been doing exactly that. It always goes live on my site first, and then probably a few days later. But Molly has a great question. She says, "I've started doing one article a week. Is 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 that a good cadence? You know, they're pulling it from their blog, which kind of um, answers basically what we were just talking about. Post it on your blog first, and then you know, share it on to you know, yeah. put the same content on LinkedIn. But is one a week a good yeah. cadence?" What, what, what a week is fantastic if you're you know if you're publishing once a week I publish once a week on my blog but I tend to publish like once a month now on LinkedIn just because I wasn't getting you know LinkedIn was de-emphasizing articles and I'm like oh, okay well I'm not gonna invest too much time and energy in this when they're de-emphasizing it but here's the interesting thing is you know the visibility of those articles looks like it's so low but it's actually readers of it it's not like I saw it scrolled it in the news feed so the numbers are deceiving because we look at the visibility of a post and that post will have 2,000, 10,000, 20,000, and then the article will have 250. And so it's like, oh, well, why would I do this for 250 or whatever that number might be, right? Uh, but those are readers. So yes. they're not scrollers. I, and I'm just curious because I around this thing, you know, when I go live on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn will reveal the the viewers, but it gives me data on the viewers. It like tells me who's yes. a CEO. Who's a, yeah. Like, so I know who's watching, not necessarily like by name. They don't give me right, names. Right, right. Yeah, like yeah. dynamics that I don't have touch points on, on other social platforms. Like I can see yeah. that I'm hitting my target. In other words, on LinkedIn, I know that, right. you know, small business owners or, you know, CEOs or, you know, whomever is actually watching these live um, interviews and I'm like, that is a huge win. You can even see right. the brand. Um, like if you have yes, a specific, yes. like a number of brands that are watching your, your lives, you can see who they are. And again, that's pretty, pretty clever. Um, yep. So Michael is asking if LinkedIn doesn't like links and I blog, would I benefit from making the blog uh, post, I guess, a LinkedIn article? It's, yeah, no, you wouldn't, believe it or not. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, in the past, you would have. But now you could literally like share a link to a LinkedIn blog post as a status update, and it still de-emphasizes it because it's a link. Meanwhile, it's not even leaving LinkedIn. I'm like, I've written about that. I'm like, it makes no sense. It's obviously a glitch in their algorithm that they haven't sorted out. <laughs> but right. again, just because something is some, some one way doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You know, there's still value to it because like I said, that, that blog post can show up on page one of Google because LinkedIn's so well indexed in Google. Yes. And um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I frequently tell people, you know, that even if you have business cards these days, people are checking you out on social. They're not, you know, your, your social now is your call is your business card in, in my humble opinion. Um, but Lori has a great question. Too. She said, what is your philosophy on what connections you accept? Mm. You yeah, touched so on it, but I, I, would really, no. I know you have strong feelings on this. So, yeah. So that's actually exactly what the, the blog post that I created uh, was about. It's like, okay, well, what makes me accept one versus not accept one? Obviously, you know, I, the, what the answer for me is not the, necessarily the answer for everybody else, right? So it really depends. Who, what is your goals? How are you using LinkedIn? Who do you want to connect with? In the early days, um, you know, I accepted people unless I found a reason not to. 
Now I only accept them if I could find a reason to accept them because I'm very close to my limit. So everybody's got to have a, a different perspective based on what's going to work for them. Um, you know, relevance, obviously, you know, is the, do you see a, a reason for this person to be in your network? Maybe they could, uh, I, there's so many different reasons or purposes that somebody could be in your network. So it doesn't have to be, oh, is this person a potential client? It could be much more than that, right? So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I think the best and easiest rule of thumb is if you can find a reason not to connect with them, don't. Yeah, I love that. So that gave that spawned that response spawned another question for me. Anyway, is what is our limit on LinkedIn? Thirty thousand first level connections, but you okay. can have unlimited followers, right? So people can follow. Um, so like, I don't have a connection button on my profile anymore. I just have a follow button. So awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just give away some stuff. How about it? Um, so we have uh, one month promo giveaways, which is going to so Sonia, Paul, and Jeffrey. Well, I'm so excited for y'all. You're going to love promo. It's a great little tool. Uh, and then the ring light is going to Cecilia. That's awesome. Congrats, Cecilia. And then the the little webcam cover, it's also going to Melanie, but it's going to, Mel yeah. to Michael. <laughs> Okay, so Michael, I have to ask a question. Like, you know, do you get this quite often? Like, do people like Michael Myers is isn't that like the um, the the scary movie guy? <laughs> scary movie guy is that what it's called? <laughs> I think I don't know which, but I think that's the scary scary movie guy. He probably gets that question quite frequently. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> um, well, congrats to all the winners. Super excited uh, that you guys joined us today. And I'm really, really happy that you guys got a chance to not only meet Melanie, but to learn how, um, one, we need to wake up and perhaps stop being ghosts over on LinkedIn and get busy with uh, leveraging it, leveraging it correctly. Because as she said, and she mentioned it several times, the platform is not the same as LinkedIn. I'm sorry, it's not the same as Facebook or Instagram. You know, share share strategically, um, business focused kind, kinds of content there um, so that you can start to attract the right people. So thank yeah, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Thank Melanie for being here. I appreciate you so much for being with us. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless. Take care. You need great marketing videos to grow your business. With Promo, you can create commercial level videos in minutes. Hop over to any number of our ready-made collections. Customize your text, font, size, and color to fit your unique style. Just upload your logo and show off your brand. Even find the perfect music and use it forever with a lifetime license. Then download your video, fit for any device. Join hundreds of thousands of businesses winning with promo videos. Start creating your videos today.